All right, guys, welcome to this session on Lua dissectors. And topic for this session is post dissection. And in post dissectors, um, they're called when the whole tree has been dissected and the packet has been dissected. And you can normally append to the end of the packet tree. But here, we are kind of trying to use the post dissection as a method to gain information for the packet and not just one packet but go across packets so we're going to use some tricks um, to accomplish that so without further ado let's dive in all right so um, in the beginning i defined this protocol foo and that's a simple post which is a um, post dissector and what we are going to do is take the info column of Wireshark. And if I can show you that, um, there's an info column in Wireshark here. This is the info column. So we want to be able to add to the info column here. And that's our purpose here. And we can do some interesting stuff that goes across packets, create state, etc. So we'll show you that. Next is we, sh we can grab the field ip.proto, which is the protocol field in the IP layer. And this is the, the syntax to do that, to grab the field. Sum equals zero is just a kind of a token to show you that there is a state. And this my table is an interesting one. I'll, I'll explain you that in a second. But you have to define this my table data structure to get around the fact that when you try to grab fields from packets, uh, multiple packets. Um, the dissection happens many, many times. So if you're like counting packets of a certain kind and the dissection happens multiple times, your count's gonna be wrong. And so you have to use some tricks to make sure that your dissection happens only once when you're running the Wireshark GUI and it doesn't happen multiple times, thus skewing your result. So you have, I'll show you that. At the bottom, we register our post dissector as this proto foo. And then obviously there is a proto foo dissector with the standard TVBP info and tree. Inside this, the first thing I check is when I call this foo, which is the first thing I do is call foo and grab its value. If the value is nil, which means it did not exist in the packet, then I don't need to do anything. And the next thing I do is I can do an info and an info is a pretty cool thing because info um, shows up in Wireshark right here. So you can see that it's printing stuff like this nil is coming from that info. And so you can print into the Wireshark console using info. And so uh, this is a good tool for debugging. Um, and then if the info is not nil, then I return, which means that I have seen this, I have done processing on this packet before um, if that's the case, I do not want to do the processing again, which prevents me from counting incorrectly, etc., etc. So this is your guard, and that's the point I was making earlier: is that this my table will come in handy as a data structure to prevent you from dissecting the packet multiple times, and be aware that Wireshark dissects each packet many, many times. And if you click on a packet, it'll dissect that packet. And so if you are having this post dissector, its answer is going to be wrong because it has dissected that packet many, many times. And therefore, if you are doing something like a math on some field or counting number of packets, it's going to be wrong. So uh, once we have done that and we have not proceeded if we have already seen the packet and only if we have not seen this packet, we proceed and set this to be true so that we'll remember next time that we have already seen this packet and not dissected again. Um, and then basically whatever field we had extracted here, we, we process it to extract the number value of it. And once we have extracted the number, I again do an info and info will log. And you can see that in our log here, um, you can see this my proto dissector called here, etc., etc., and so you can log stuff into that uh, um, the info um, using info you can log into the console which is pretty cool next i add to the info column and info column here um, i'll show you that and you'll see that info column doesn't have that data and this is the sign that 
whatever data we put in there has been overridden by another dissection. Remember that we only um, we only dissect. Uh, sorry, one second. So we only dissect in the situation if we have not seen it before. Then we do this post dissection. But if the dissector keeps getting called again, other pieces of dissector will update the info field and whatever we are trying to write here will disappear. And that's why another technique that I'm showing here is to write to a debug file. And if you write to a debug file like this, you open the file and append to this, keep appending to this file. That way you can write your um, status or whatever messages, debug status, whatever you're collecting from this post dissector you can write to a file and then close the file and then that serves the same purpose of printing to you know the wireshark info field etc um so um that's about it for the code here i think i've covered all the points um let's look at the uh wireshark here and since i've already dissected this i will show you a trick to clean up the dissection so first i'll close the packet and then I will um, reload Lua plugin so that my dissector states are already set. Then I'm going to open the Lua console so you can see that it's nice and clean here. And when I open this file here now, you can see that all the stuff, and you can see here that the dissector is called many, many times. I only have two packets, and you can see that it's been called one, two, three, four and nine times nine packets are dissected when i only have two packets that's pretty amazing right so to guard against all this and to not corrupt your state collection is why we have this my table data structure and um, and i'm using that to guard against the packets being dissected so in the beginning your packets are dissected in sequence and that's when you need to really collect all your data and beyond that you should not be bothered by the fact that users clicked a certain uh, packet, etc., and that's causing your stats to be corrupted. And so, um, essentially, um, we have now collected that. And so, if I um, if I can open that file, um, I can show you that that file debug.txt has been logged. And um, there you go. So if I, I guess I need to format this uh, a little bit better, but uh, you can see that pretty much it's been it's been logging um, data, and um, and so if you've done this, um, then you have um, essentially collected all the data that you needed to at the end and save this file. And if you do that, then you've collected all the data that you need. So um, that's it guys. So um, I guess that's the end of video. And um, in this episode, I've showed you how to do post dissection. And sometimes I might do another video on taps, but taps help you collect data across packets and not just post dissection but across packets but i'm kind of using post dissection to show you that you can use this for um for the purposes of extracting fields of packets and then using a state variable so that you can go across and actually extract the uh, the state and process the state to do other meaningful stuff with the state and uh and so you're leveraging the power of wireshark as your uh, parser and then building your state machine on top of it using this post dissector to do other interesting cross uh, packet stuff that uh, that might be useful so um, that's it guys and that's the end of this uh, video um, I hope you liked it and if you did do give me a thumbs up and subscribe and hit the um, bell icon so that you can you get notified I'm uh, continuing to build more videos in this series and I'm also working on uh, a couple other series that might be interesting for you guys if you're into software engineering and programming. So um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this and uh, thanks for watching and until next time, take care.